Welcome to AutoCAD 2015. If you haven't done so already, what you can do is you can go to AutoCAD's site for their educational community and you can create an account and you can get your own version of 2015 for free. It gives you the educational versions and we'll talk about in class how that's different from the real uh, quote-unquote full-blown version. Um, but you should start off opening up your AutoCAD 2015 um, and we're going to be using the regular version, not the architectural version in this course, um, just because it, it's, it's more of a general overview. Um, architecture is a little bit more specific. Um, but when you open up your first file, you should be um, looking at essentially what I'm looking at. Okay. And the interface of the program, so what has happened is that since 2009, AutoCAD has introduced this ribbon system. Okay, basically before it used to have a series of command buttons at the top, but now what they've done is they've, and this is, you know, what a lot of the um, computer programs are doing, so it, it shouldn't be unfamiliar to you already. Um, so what they're doing is they're taking their commands that are most commonly used in certain tasks and they're grouping them together up above um, into these palettes of these ribbons of commands. Um, a lot of people in the profession have moved above 2009. Um, if you do see that your firm, your office, does use a version that's earlier than 2009, um, it's not a big deal. Okay, the commands are still the same, so it's just getting used to a, an interface that looks a little bit differently. So the interface of AutoCAD consists of the application button, okay, with it, which is this giant, um, you know, graphic take on an A, the command ribbons, okay, as we already talked about. Um, model space, okay, we'll talk about model space versus paper space, but what essentially we're going to be drafting in is what's called model space, and this is that space in the center. Consider it, you know, basically like a drafting board. Um, you have your command window that's located at the bottom. It's a little bit transparent, a little bit hard to see, but you can actually expand it and contract it as you need to. Um, and then there's the status bar, okay, and that's this bar down here. The quick access toolbar, which is up above here, um, contains basic commands such as open, save, plot, you know, etc. Whereas the giant A, okay, the application menu, houses, um, you know, the same but more of these commands. Um, the command ribbons, okay, which are these ribbons here, contain the tool buttons for commands to access the different groups of commands. Okay, what we want to do is we want to switch our workspace with this cog that's essentially located down below. Now when I hit on this cog you'll see that what is uh, checked is 3D modeling. Okay, And basically what that does is it controls what shows up in the ribbons above. And so um, you know yours might not be on 3D modeling, it might be on drafting an annotation, that's usually the default, but for some reason uh, mine is already on 3D modeling. And I, you know, so I asked myself, okay well do I really want those tools? Um, we're not going to actually be working with 3D modeling until later on in the semester, so we are going to get some exposure to that. But for now, what I want to do is I want to change it to drafting an annotation because that's the task that I'm going to be starting with first. Now, what you'll see is that when I click that, the drafting an annotation, what that does is it changes the tools that are accessed up here. So all it does is essentially swaps out one toolbox for another. It doesn't affect anything that's in model space. It doesn't affect anything that the commands do. All it is is just changing the access to these tools. So it's essentially like um, I'm taking your model making tools and I'm swapping them out for your drafting tools. That's really all of it's doing. So to get started um, in looking at the tools, what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand the ribbon. So you'll see that these are essentially tool buttons and I can click on them, okay, in order to create an object, okay, or if I find that something's not here, okay, I can expand these tools and they're, um, as long as they have a little white arrow that's pointing down, then that means that this ribbon can be expanded and that there's more tools that are underneath here, okay. Um, they just essentially put the main ones in the view here, okay, these, <clears throat> the ones that are below, are essentially you know not as common. If you find that a tool button has that that arrow pointing down, okay, basically those are just some additional options for making something. So for example, with the circle, the default is to do a center and radius. Okay, first I click on the center, then I define the radius. 
But if that's not the way that you need to come about this circle, you can define the center and then the diameter. You can snap it to two points. You can snap it to three points. And if you really want to get crazy, you can type in a tan tan radius or the tan tan tan, if you still recall that from um, high school math, which I don't, so I rarely use that. Um, in drafting, a lot of times, you need to have as much of the, the screen okay, open as possible. Okay? A lot of people, especially depending on the size of the computer screen, um, a lot of people like to make their modeling space, okay, their model space, as big as possible. So you can actually expand and contract all of these um, tools that AutoCAD has in order to make um, your model space okay, as big as possible. And you'll find that when people draft, they actually have really, really huge screens. And the reason being is they like to have a nice big model space to work with. You'll find that if you do have to work on a computer with a smaller screen, it's a, you know, it's kind of a big hindrance, um, you know, in getting things done. It's just the way that we visualize things. We, you know, we like to have it all there. Um, if you want to minimize anything, or if you find that your ribbons have become minimized, there's this little button up here, okay, and you can know you you see that you know when I am mousing over things, AutoCAD does tell me what it is. So it's telling me that if I click on this, it'll minimize to panel buttons. So if I click on it, you'll see that it contracts. Okay, and it, even if I hit it twice, it'll contract even more to just a list of what these menus are. So, um, and then to get it back again, you can just click it again and again, and it will expand it. So you can basically cycle through how you want to use it, um, you know, and how you, what you want to see okay, how much you want to view just by clicking on this little tiny button at the top here. Um, now the thing is, uh, AutoCAD in the way that you set this up is very, very personal. Okay, You'll find that one person does it, do, does it differently than another person. You know, other people like to have certain commands out, whereas, you know, um, you know some people don't like to have anything at all. So for example, um, this uh, command tool, okay, the command line. You know, a lot of people like this expanded, and I think it's really helpful to have expanded at first um, in order to see how AutoCAD is talking back to you. Um, but a lot of people will actually get rid of it, okay? And you can um, call it back by hitting Control-9, okay? So, um, you know, if something disappears, you can always get it back. Um, AutoCAD has done a good job of making everything expandable. Um, so that you can make it bigger, or you can get rid of it, or you can make it smaller um, in order to, you know, be as efficient and as comfortable um, with the computer. So there's a lot of customization in that regard. With this, okay, it does depend upon a lot of memorization where things are, okay, so you just have to get yourself familiar with where the tools are, um, which ones are located in which um, menu, okay. And um, the best way to do that is to just go through and just keep working with the tools and try to get yourself familiar with it. There are many different ways of doing something, and you'll find, um, and you'll see that when we start to work with AutoCAD, is that there really is no one set way of doing something. Um, there are some things, and, and we'll get into it when we actually start to draft real things, um, you know, that do for the profession specify a specific way of drawing something. You know, for example, um, I'm thinking of doors. There's a specific way of drawing the swing, um, which actually does fall into, uh, you know, exemplifying the code, okay, through the, dr the drawing. Um, but, you know, otherwise, you know, they're, they're, you'll start to realize, okay, you know, um, and we'll talk about the tools too as well, you know, that we come across, which ones are better for which, what are the differences between, you know, a line versus a polyline, for example. Um, but, you know, there are different ways of doing things, okay? There really is no um, incorrect way of getting something in AutoCAD. There are different ways that we use it, okay? There are different outcomes, and we'll see that, you know, throughout the course of the semester. Um, but really, you know, you can just start drawing, and if you make something, you make something. You know, that's great. So, as I said, we'll get into it. But essentially, you know, these are the tools that you're going to have. You know, the drawing tools, the modifying tools, is, are what you're going to be using the most in order to get something to look the way that it is. Uh, you know, and, and the thing is, you can customize this too as well. Okay, um, we're not going to get into that this, you know, into that through this course. Um, it's a little bit more advanced. 
but there is um, what's called the CUI, which is essentially the customizable user interface. Um, and you can essentially, you know, customize this and customize, you know, you can customize AutoCAD to work the way that you want it um, and to look the way that you want it, you know, to, again, make it a more personal um, endeavor. I think this is ample, okay? I don't think that, you know, you need to go crazy in the customization of it. Um, but, you know, just to keep in mind that, yes, you can do that in AutoCAD. So as we talked about in the center of the space, okay, this is our drawing area, and this is referred to as model space. We'll get into paper space later, um, but this is essentially infinite space, okay? So it goes on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Um, at the bottom of the screen, okay, is a set of layout tabs, okay? If I click on that, that's actually paper space, and, um, you know, so... If you, you know, click on the layout, click back into model, okay, model is our model space, we'll only have one model space, and we'll have multiple, we could have multiple layout tabs, you know, for paper space, but as I said, we'll get into that later when we talk about paper space, and that'll make more sense later on. Um, up at the top, you can see that these are the files that are open, so there's a, if I click on this new tab, that's basically if I don't have a drawing open, um, if I click on drawing one, okay, that's the file that I have open now. That's the default that AutoCAD names its files whenever you open up a new one. It always starts with drawing one, drawing two, drawing three, um, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, now at the bottom of the window, okay, you'll notice that there's a status bar with several buttons. So there's a bunch of buttons down here. And essentially what are, these are, um, is these are your drafting settings, okay? Um, there's a coordinate readout, okay, the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, well, actually, it's located um, more towards the center, um, but essentially what that does is it gives, you know, uh, a tracking of where your mouse is, okay? Um, this um, area here, okay, this little um, wheel here is called the WCS, Okay, and that's essentially um, the uh, coordinate system, okay, and the orientation system that AutoCAD has introduced into, uh, you know, their uh, more recent uh, programs, okay. Before it used to be just an X and a Y. Now they actually have a north, south, east, and west, and a top view. And again, you know, once we start to work with uh, 3D, this will start to make more sense, okay. But for now, try not to touch this. Um, you know, not to, you know, be mean or anything, but because if you start to play around with this, then it can start to screw up the orientation of your drawing. So I always tell beginners, you know, don't touch this until we, we become a little bit more familiar with it. To the right of the coordinates, okay, so these are the coordinates down here. To the right, these are your drafting settings, um, and they are um, buttons that you'll start to get um, familiar with. You should be getting familiar with this. You shouldn't be drafting without knowing what these are. Um, and what they include is snap mode, grid mode, uh, grid display, ortho mode, polar tracking, etc. Um, we'll be covering some of these, okay, but not all. So, you know, go through these and review them on your own. Again, it's one of those things that's a personal thing, you know, when you start to draft. Some people like to work with some tools, some people like to work with others off. Um, so they're just settings in order to help you draft more efficiently. If they're blue, Okay, you'll notice some are blue, some are gray. If they're blue, that means that they're on, and you'll see that when I mouse over it, it'll also tell you that. If they're gray, it means that they're off. 